Yes. Right, what's the uh, current situation with the vaccine? The question is, what's the current situation with the virus vaccine? Um, at the moment, the vaccine has been allowed to come to Australia. It just has to be ratified by the DPI department. Like, um, I think it's a bit of misinformation going around, right? So, what we know is that uh, when the vaccine has been uh, registered, We've had it since 83, when we had it first, a lot of people didn't want to vaccinate, they didn't think it was necessary, now everyone vaccinates. It is devastating. Um, the virus seems to hit in two ways. Is it? I've been told, and I think this is probably wrong. The vaccine, the virus when it's out of the host to start with, if it hits you in a strong state, you're in big trouble, it can wipe the long head. If it hits you, it's been out of the host for quite a while, then it hits you, it can be in a weak state. And it might only kill one or two pigeons and the rest will get over it. Um, it's not much of a thing. But it hits you in a strong state. It is horrible. It's one of the worst things I've ever known in pigeons. Uh, a friend of mine, he went a few years without the vaccinated and his young sir slowly vaccinated. We need to do them again. He went a few years and it hit him. Um, well, if you've ever seen a real man cry, that's what happens. So, all I can say, when you can get the vaccine, every one of you vaccinate. It is best to vaccinate when they're 21 days old in the nest. Then, they've got a week before you take them out of the nest, they get over it, any stress, and they come away fine. Then, vaccine, I vaccinate, we breed in January, February, March, April, May, we vaccinate 21 days. We start placing pigeons in April, so in February I vaccinate everything again. Um, it doesn't last too long, so you must do it every year. Uh, some people fall but it would last two or three years. Uh, I lent a pen um, to a friend and it went vaccinated one year. It came back to me. The firm I saw in the area, that one head went down. She'd been vaccinated four years running, this one year, and she went down. So it's, you've got to vaccinate every year. Uh, it's no big thing, you don't hurt the pigeons. Um, I always vaccinate on the paperwork you get, they show you sticking the needle, uh, someone holding their head and sticking the needle towards the back of the neck. I absolutely hate that. If something goes wrong, the vision jumps, the needle's into the spine. I always want to vaccinate, where's Captain? Come here. <laughs> vaccinate this way. Put the needle through. If you go too deep, it goes out the other side, causes no problem. Vaccinate that, hold the skin up, just no one else on the vision hold the head like that. <laughs> needle it like that, hold the skin up, needle it, out. He's always wanted to do that. Yeah, thank you. We've got a model here as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to ask Dr. Marshall uh, whether we need to do, obviously, every bird in the loft, including stockbirds at the same time. Uh, I've got an um, project. Um, logistically, this means that 21 days of age, you've got the vaccine, this is what I need to clarify. You've got the vaccine, that means you, is it refrigerated or frozen? Yeah, so that you can go to the fridge and vaccinate 21 day old birds. It's to be kept around about 340 degrees C. 340 degrees C, keep it. Um, but vaccinated. They say you use the whole pot first. But as long as you use two needles, don't contaminate the bottle, then you're okay. If you use the same needle that you put in the bottle, the patients you're going to contaminate the bottle, uh, but it's rubbish. But as long as you use a new needle in the bottle, draw it from the syringe, change to the other needle, it will keep. Um, I've done that for years, I've had no problem. I've known people contaminate it and have big problems. Um, Probably it's only, uh, they say, to use whole bottle, but it is far better to do the vision in three weeks than it is six, because in four or five weeks you could be, you could have the, the 
miners, you could be in big trouble. All right, now the question, do the stock birds too? Yeah, yeah, definitely every year. Um, so I'm just trying to get my head around the process. But what we do in Australia with mox vaccination, we usually vaccinate every bird at one time in February or January, right? We, we do with the older people. Okay, so that's a good. So the surgery, so we'll all be just we all do them at one time in February, right? With the mox vaccine. So, and then we would, would we do the, if we got through our bridge, we did the 21 days, then we would, would we do all the youngsters at that same time? Do, do all the youngsters at 21 days, then when you do it annually, do every vision, because they've only done a month or two months before, because after 10 months, it starts to dwindle. All right, and the doctor, are we expecting that once, once the vaccine comes in, the old tea on the borders. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's no danger. I, I think what you have to understand is don't be too careful about this disease. This, this disease is a slow moving disease. What we know is that we have to vaccinate against it, right? But, um, and then once the vaccination is done, we can relax about the, the disease, right? Unvaccinated, we, we, need, we, we need to vaccinate, right? But don't be over fearful about this disease once you vaccinate. Okay, uh, one more. Say one thing on that. A, a lot of people have known that their stoppers don't go out. So they say, someone else looks after the stopper. I don't do those. This is point. Travel on. Can, can travel on droplets of water. You get a misty day, heavy, humid day, and it can travel through the air. You do not need to take it on your shoes. You do not need a vision to take it from vision to vision. It can travel through the air. So vaccinate everything. Okay, your question. Yeah, my question was the um, after the 21 days, I just got missed whether you can freeze that or just leave it free. Right. What do you do with the vaccine after you've done all the youngsters for 21 days? Do you want to keep it for the next batch? What do you just keep it in the fridge or freeze it or what? At three to four degrees in the fridge. Okay. And then you bring it up to room temperature before you use it. Where are you? Yeah, what sort of cost are you looking at? Yeah. How much does it cost for you? In England it's 27 pounds for, for 100 dollars. Which one's that? Club of mine. 27 pounds in England. In Australia, I do not know. I've got it all again. I've got no idea. 40 bucks for 100 dollars. Uh, to try and help us, and there's been no mention of trying to make a 
money out of this thing. Not from you and you, I don't know about it. Don't know about it elsewhere. Um, yeah. So my, my, um, my gift to the fans is that um, I'm, I'm trying, with the help of a course bring it. Um, I think everyone knows the course doing this sort of thing. Paul's got very really good history of veterinary products and he's got expertise in managing how we get the vaccines and how to store them. So we're at an advantage here for that. My role is purely um, as a figurehead because you need a veterinarian to uh, supply the vaccine and I won't be charging any fee for that. The other thing is that we're going to get the, um, I think I can say this, to get the um, vaccine holds up to you. So what we pay for it is what we're going to get it for. So why we're, why we're doing this is we want everyone to be encouraged to vaccinate the birds. Alright, so making that quite clear, the vets aren't going to slap you for doing it. And they're going to assist in uh, Paul Springer importing it in to be distributed amongst the association. Uh, gentlemen there, please. Well, so my understanding is that your recommendation is Australia, yes. yeah, press ministers Rob Marshall uh, recommend that every pigeon fly vaccinates. Yeah, that's true. The advantage, but you have to remember that the advantage here is that with SAPA, you're with, because of Paul Springer's ability, it is that the cost that you'll get the vaccine is not going to be the cost that the vaccine is going to be available commercially. Right? So other states may be paying more money for the vaccine. Okay, will it be? I don't know who can answer, but the virus, what's it's in the air? Does any one of you know, does it die out? Has it a uh, lifespan? Uh, Willie wants to know whether the airborne virus uh, eventually will die out due to weather conditions or extreme heat or whatever. It must die out because I've never suffered some loss and hit them. Uh, uh, hardly any. Hardly any. Patients have been ill. Um, you can see the twist in the neck on one or two in them. So it's hitting them in a dying state. So it, so it must die out. Yeah, I, I asked the same question. I said, how come uh, if it's been in England in 1983, how come there's still feral pigeons? And it's like rats and mice, so you can put the rats back up and you never ever get the lot. I think we can explain the virus like any other virus disease. The virus infection is intimately related to the general health of the flock. Um, what we're finding in Victoria now, I haven't got any first hand experience about this disease, and that's where I, I need Jeff's help who's got intimate knowledge of the disease. But my understanding of the disease in Australia is that. Uh, I, I understand the nature of the, the birds that got this disease here. They were Iraqi donics and Iraqi tumblers. I understand this culture very well because I look after a lot of Iraqi birds. Um, the birds are usually kept in very overcrowded uh, conditions. They're very, they usually have got complicated diseases, which means that a lot of other diseases there. Um, my view is that, that the disease, the virulence of the disease is related to the general health of the birds. Now, Jeff sees that that and this is where I need his help. That there are, he, he feels that there are more brutal strains and less brutal strains, and that's why you've got the picture of some dogs being hit hard and some others. So I'd like to get that deal with the object. They do tell us how it's just deep. Yeah, friend of mine called His loft is always clean and immaculate. His husband be school, his birds are always in really good health. And he got him. Hammer. Um, and then on some with bad husbandry, not very good health, which amazes me, which goes against what I would have thought would happen, got away lately. So there must be more, I don't think it's more virulent and less virulent, I just think it's in what state the virus is when it hits you, how you're looking at those. I may be wrong, uh, I'm not. Okay, uh, Ray, what's on? Yeah, one is that what is
Well, um, the first question was, uh, I think it's already been answered, uh, Ray wants to know about the uh, stress and loss and whether they're going to get hit harder with the virus. But the second question was interesting because he's referring to the fact that there's a very powerful sprint racing uh, competition in the UK and he wants to know how your win equates to the sprint racing wins. Uh, according to what you do and what you want. Um, I won two sprint nationals, 200 miles, about 300 k. Um, but these two is doing it 1900 meters a minute. One. Um, how can I say this? It's got to affect people again. Um, to be a sprint pigeon, they can't fly 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours and a half of pigeon. Um, I want sprint pigeons. Uh, I want sprint pigeons that can fly 14, 15 hours. It's different than it used to be. If, if you want to win in the real top competition in Europe, you've got to have fast pigeons. Um, a pigeon on his own back, with no wind, a fly roughly 47, 48 miles per hour. I'm not that is in kilos, but 47, 48 miles an hour. It's, um, so if you have a 60 mile race, that's what the winning speed is. Nowadays, if you've got a 500 mile race in Europe, that is the winning speed. If you've got a, a 10 mile hour wind at the backside, you can add 10 miles to the 47, 48, and then do 57, 58. If you've got a 10 mile an hour wind into them, split it in half, that's 5 mile an hour, and take that off the 47, 48, and that's the speed they do, around 43. But it's got to the stage now. The distance pigeons are flying as fast as the sprint pigeons, but keep going longer. That never used to be the case, but now you need a complete pigeon. But if I was a sprint man only racing up to 200 miles, um, and I wanted to sell my pigeons, I'd say that was the best by far, but to me, sorry, but that's only half a pigeon. I'm going to sort the question here very quickly. Uh, which nation has got the best pigeons in the world now? Have the Germans overtaken the Belgians and the Dutch? The Chinese got the best pigeons in the world, they bought them off. <laughs> yeah, there's no import from there. Uh, Jeff, I know that you use a, a one mil syringe when you're doing those flaming three weeks, you get four doses out of one mil. Do any of you use one of the vaccinating guns? Where you put the bottle on top when you're doing the bulk of the pigeons? A lot of people see uh, Probably the best way, um, I think Catherine's too tight to let me buy one, um, but uh, on the club of that, you use point two, and on, on the um, lobby back, you use uh, point two five. Um, but because you get the exact uh, measurement, and not, to be honest, it's the best way to do it. Yeah. They go. Okay, uh, Wally Wojcik. I just want to know if that's about his spread through air. Yeah, I think he's mentioned that. It, it, can, it can get on the, uh, anyway, air and, and with raindrops and such. Yeah. When it goes through the air, it's always when we, in, in England, um, October is a bad time uh, because we get the damp weather, uh, a lot of mist and fog, and still quite warm, and that's when it spreads the most. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of it is through the air, because a lot of people then got the pigeons shut up. I might ask Rob Marshall, Rob, is there any hope that the 40 degree days we have in Adelaide and Melbourne might, might knock the virus on the head? Well, I think what Jeff is saying is true because it won't survive in the environment for very long. So, um, from what you're saying as well, that those conditions aren't conducive to healthy conditions either. The advantage is too good. Uh, Jim? Yeah, uh, my question uh, would be uh, is there any side effects that you're aware of after the birds have been vaccinated? Right, side effects. Good side questions. Effects, like, uh, uh, the the no. Um, in England, when it started, everyone, all the 
it's going to cause problems here, it's going to cause problems there. Going back a few years with the dogs, when they had the, the, the greyhounds, when they had, they were forced to vaccinate, oh, they won't win this, they won't win that. Um, they were frightened of that. Yeah, they take the children to the doctors, get them vaccinated, don't worry at all. Um, none, no side effects whatsoever. As long as you vaccinate correctly, do not injure the vision, no side effects whatsoever. Okay, yes? When you vaccinate, the question is, if you vaccinate on a 40 degree day, is that going to damage your vaccine? Is it going to ruin it? No, we're not 40 degrees in <laughs> Thank you. 
the assembly. Uh, you mentioned you don't worry about size or shape. The, the first piece is de wear. Um, they cost so much, I couldn't afford them, and I had to save up. I gave them a deposit and had them delivered the following year. Um, they were late press when they came. Um, I took a little head out of the box. She was a little sprawly hen. I thought, mm, okay, but I think that's a lot of money for her. And then I picked the cock out of the box. And what a horrible thing. Big, deep, ugly as they came. Um, I just moved a house then and I started another business. And the old loft was propped up. I took two pair of youngsters from him. And then he, somehow or other, the 